Thanks so much, Kirsten. All new at 630, we're working for you and taking a closer look at what germs are lurking in your kitchen. We enlisted the help of a food safety expert to warn you about dirty kitchens. And Turek's Fuse Corey Duke reveals the five things in your home that would likely fail a health inspection. Sometimes we're on the go. We've got sports and all sorts of stuff. Carly Ray is always on the go, but she's still making time for her home cooked meals. For breakfast, pancakes, waffles, eggs and bacon. And for dinner. Pasta is really popular. The kids like spaghetti. Um, I make this really good pesto and gnocchi dish. Um, the kids love chicken. All that cooking means a lot of cleaning. But you know, there's days that dishes are in the sink for probably 24 hours and we just don't care. <laughs> we can all relate, but food safety is no joke. The CDC says about one in six Americans get sick from foodborne illnesses each year and about 3,000 actually die. Health officials say you can learn from the pros. There are five risk factors that we look for in professional kitchens and you can translate that over to your home environment. Number one, beware of cross-contamination. Anytime that you use or you're handling any type of raw product and you're using equipment, before you move on to any other equipment, you should wash, rinse, wash and rinse that equipment. One major piece of equipment most people forget to wash is their sink. Most people's kitchen sinks have more germs than their toilets, uh, which is quite remarkable. Experts suggest washing out your sink regularly and then wiping it down with a sanitizing wipe afterward. Risk factor number two, personal hygiene. Washing your hands is just as important as washing kitchen equipment. Because you are handling raw chicken, raw uh, beef, things like that. Then there's risk factor three and four, which go hand in hand. Proper holding and cooking temperatures. For chicken, we want to hit 165. A general rule is our steaks uh, and pork cuts. We want to hit 155 and then fish 145 is safe. You should be using a probe thermometer to make sure you're reaching that proper temperature. What people need to understand is that raw meat can harbor harmful bacteria, germs that can make people sick. And the way to kill these germs, you can't wash them off. The way to kill them is to heat them up to the proper temperatures. Finally, risk factor number five, food from a safe source. Make sure you're buying from a properly licensed business inspected by the health department. And keep your perishable foods stored at the right temperature. Set your refrigerator at 41 degrees or lower, your freezer at 32 degrees or lower, and always thaw your meats in the refrigerator. It's called slacking. It brings it up to that thawed temperature but doesn't allow it to go over. I never thaw on the counter. I never put something out and just let it sit. And if you buy frozen vacuum sealed meat, experts say let it breathe. You should poke a hole in the packaging to allow oxygen in. There's a certain bacteria that can grow in the lack of oxygen. One interesting note, Rogers says not everything in your refrigerator needs to be there. Mayonnaise is a non potentially hazardous food time controlled for so you can keep mayonnaise on the counter if you wanted to. The same goes for ketchup and hot sauce. As for Carly, she's not too worried about the way she's doing things in the kitchen, but she's happy to be up on the latest healthy habits. It's good things to know um, to be preventative and then obviously making sure that our kitchen sink is always sanitized. I, when he said that a kitchen sink can be dirtier than your toilet, gross. Corey Duke, two works for you.